Uh, the doctor is in and he has brought his heart with him. <laughs> this is exciting. We love props to help us understand because we talk about heart health so much, doctor, and really understanding what's going on in there. Um, it's good. It's good to have a nice uh, prop. Dr. Amir Abbas is the director of cardiovascular research at Corwell Health and also doing all kinds of things. Um, but doctor, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, let's just get right to it. Show us, first of all, uh, holding this heart up on your body, uh, this is just a good anatomy lesson for all of us. So when we talk about heart disease, we're talking about structural problems that are happening within the heart itself? That's an excellent question, Dina. So basically, the heart has different types of problems. It can have mechanical problems or electrical problems. Yeah. Uh, the issue that we're going to be talking about is really a problem within the heart valves. They're like mini doors that help flow the blood from one side to the other. Uh, there's also arteries that feed the heart muscle and they can get blocked with plaque and cholesterol that can cause heart damage. Yeah, no, those blood. arteries are teeny tiny, very right? Teeny, like tiny. spaghetti noodles. Yes, but they're very important. Yeah. And that's why you have to make every effort to make them flowing. That's why heart disease is our number one killer, right? Because Absolutely. there are some pretty fragile components of this uh, mechanism uh, in our bodies. Absolutely. So let's talk about the big valve that we see there. Um, and because a lot of people have to have that replaced, right? What is that exactly? So this here is a model of the aortic valve. It's a model of an artificial valve. Uh, traditionally, 20 years ago, the only way we had to replace that was through open heart surgery. Now we have a technique where we can go usually through the arteries uh, from the leg and deliver this valve inside the aortic valve, which is the main valve sitting on top of the heart. So you're putting basically the new valve, and we have a little bit of animation here, doctor, but this is kind of how what it looks like, I believe. You're going up there and you're plopping that new good valve inside the old one, and everything starts uh, flowing properly? Absolutely. Why is this aortic valve, why is it such an issue as people get older? The problem is, is that with age, calcium tends to deposit in the tissue of the valve, making it very stiff and rigid. Okay. So it kind of gets like a jammed door. It doesn't open all the way. And, so and why is that valve so critical to our cardiovascular system? Because if you look at it, it's the last valve coming out of the heart. So it controls how much blood your heart can actually eject. Okay. And so if it's narrowed, then the heart isn't ejecting enough blood. Yeah, and that if, if impacts your entire body. Your whole body, and it backs up, goes to your lungs, you get short of breath, you get heart failure, and unfortunately can lead to death. Okay, so one of the things that you were faced with with a patient that you dealt with recently was you couldn't go up through her. So many times you go up through the, the artery in the leg, and somehow that reaches around. <laughs> that seems to be a good path, but it wasn't. That's correct. So patients can sometimes have blocked arteries that aren't large enough for our large valve catheters to be able to be delivered through the groin. So sometimes we look for any other artery that reaches the heart, and like they say, all roads lead to Rome. So we actually did a procedure by going through the artery in her neck to deliver this new valve inside her old valve that she had received. Oh, and what is that like? To, is this what it, is this uh, what you're putting in through the valve? That's correct. So it's basically done as a team with our cardiac surgeon doing something called a cut down from the carotid artery, which is the artery that feeds your brain. We do this under general anesthesia, and we were able to deliver the valve through the. Um, through that carotid artery and into the heart. The challenge with our patient was that her old tissue valve, as you might see in this diagram here, sat right across from the arteries that you were talking about earlier that feed the heart muscle, mm. those small but very important ones. Okay. And so what we had to do so before we- she had another we, blockage to deal with. Exactly, okay. so we had to slice the tissues of her old valve by literally threading a wire through those valves and slicing them open to allow the blood flow through that old tissue mm. so our new valve wouldn't block the arteries of the heart and cause a bigger problem. So we had a double challenge. Wow, and she's doing quite well. She's doing great um, and uh, you know we became very close and both on the personal and the professional level. She was a great patient. I believe that you know including your patient as a team member in the decision making, yeah. uh, being there for them, answering their question, providing them that psychological support is, is really important and that's really the heart to heart talk that we like to say with cardiology. No, oh, that's so important, Dr. Boss. Well, that is uh, so interesting. Thank you for bringing us this story and helping us understand a little bit. It helps us when we're being told you have to eat right and you have to exercise. It helps us to understand sort of the little technicalities that are so important with our cardiovascular health. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank Good you for stuff. having me.